the monarch butterfly is at serious risk of disappearing. The number of monarch butterflies that made it to Mexico last year was so small that many now question if the population will ever rebound to its previous size. The insect's numbers have been in a free fall for the past 30 years, and this season is the worst yet. Two big reasons cited their primary food source, the milkweed, has been disappearing, along with what logging has done to their forest habitat. Hi, I'm Rich Lund, and this is part three of a five-part video series on how to raise monarchs. How to collect the eggs from the wild, then how to rear them at home and finally release them as adults. In part one, we showed you how to identify the milkweed plant and then how to find the eggs and collect them from the plant without causing harm to the eggs itself. In part two, we showed you how to get the egg ready to hatch and then finally showed you it actually hatching. Now is where the real work begins. With the caterpillars finally just hatched, there's much that has to be done on your part. You've got to provide them with fresh food and plenty of it. You have to also store them in a nice convenient way. We'll show you how to do that. And then also you got to make sure to be cleaning up after them too. So that's what all this video is about. And uh, we'll go ahead and take it from there. All right, so you've got a fresh new caterpillar, new to the world, turned around, ate some of his egg, and is ready for action. What do you do now? What's he doing now? I don't really know. I think he's showing off for the camera or something. Uh, as far as what you need to do though, there's not much that you have to do the first couple of days. Just let the caterpillar be, let it do its thing. It's going to be eating small portions of the leaf, hardly even noticeable, and it's going to transform into what's called the second instar. Right here it's at the first instar. Instars just refer to the different stages that the caterpillar is in. After about one day, maybe on the second day depending upon when it hatched, you're going to see the second instar. Here you're going to be able to see the stripes on it, and also it's going to be eating noticeable portions of the leaf where you can actually see the different spots where it has started to make a meal. Now, again, for the first or second day, there's not really much you have to do, but after about two days, that leaf is going to start to dry out. When the leaf starts to dry out around the second day, you're going to need to transfer these caterpillars onto a fresh leaf, give them some fresh food source. That's the healthiest thing for them. Now, I've seen other videos that have recommended using things like a paintbrush or a Q-tip even to transfer them from one leaf to the other. I think that touching them with anything is just not the best idea compared to doing what we've done before with the eggs. Cut out a small portion of the leaf and then using your tweezers again you can transfer the leaf onto a fresh new leaf. That way you don't have to touch the caterpillar at all and you don't risk dropping it or injuring it as much as you would if you were transferring it with some sort of tool. Here the caterpillar is just resting on that leaf portion and when it's ready it'll crawl onto some new fresh leaf and begin eating. These ones here are fresh third instar caterpillars. They just molted their skin and got to the third instar. And here they're also going to be eating a little bit noticeably more and your leaves are going to become damaged a little bit sooner. The more they're eating from the leaf, the faster that leaf ends up drying out. So we're going to have to transfer these as well and they're still too young to where I don't want to touch them and instead I, I'd rather cut out the portions of leaves and place them onto fresh leaves so that way I don't risk injuring them. Now also, at this stage, I prefer these containers because they seal them in and there's no little easy holes for the caterpillars to get through. That can be a problem because sometimes when they're at these early stages, you do get what I like to call a wanderer. You want to check your containers every now and then for these wanderers because they might get off the leaf and just get lost and not exactly know where to go. Again, you got to think like a caterpillar. This little guy here does not know where that leaf is. It's tough for them to see how to get there. So if he's wandering around, this one wound up on the top of the lid, you might need to transfer them back to the leaf. Again, rather than using a tool, I'd prefer to use a piece of leaf and coax the caterpillar onto that leaf. Once he's convinced that that's the place he wants to be, he'll latch onto it, and then I very slowly will lift him back onto that fresh leaf. And we'll just place him right back there with his buds. He's ready to go. Now, to f make it to the next instar stage, what the caterpillars do is they will molt. They'll shed off their skin and expose new ones. Here I caught one of the caterpillars sliding out of its skin on its way to its fourth instar. You can see it kind of takes it off almost like a sock. Here I've sped up the video just to see it a little bit easier. Right after they molt, they're very vulnerable and they need to dry. So make sure that if you do see one having just molted, 
You should leave them alone for a little bit until it has dried. Once the caterpillars are to the fourth and fifth instar, then transferring them gets a lot easier. At this point I don't mind touching them. Just pull very, very slowly because they will be attaching themselves with silk to the leaves and you don't want to pull too hard or rough. So be very gentle about it and you should be able to transfer them with your hands and it becomes a lot easier of a job. Here we have a caterpillar in the fifth instar, the last phase that it's going to have before it eventually makes the chrysalis. You can see also that the two sets of, I don't want to say antenna, but feelers have been fully developed. Those help it feel what's nearby and detect movement near it. It also has the classic black, white, and yellow fully developed markings that we expect to see when we think of a monarch caterpillar. Now during the first, second, and third instar phases, I like these food containers to keep them in. But once they graduate to fourth and fifth instar, I'll move them into these larger pet containers. They have really good ventilation, and the caterpillars have become large enough to where if they go wandering, they're not going to be able to wiggle through those little holes. Ventilation is very important. You don't want mold to grow if it becomes too moist in there. So you can see on the left, that's where I'm keeping the first, second, third instar phases along with any unhatched eggs that are about to hatch. And on the right, I've got a mixture of fourth and fifth instar in there. Now up to this point, of course, your caterpillars have been eating leaves, but it hasn't been too much. They were a lot smaller then. But once they reach the fourth and fifth instar, these guys eat like lawnmowers on steroids. They are going to go through the leaves in a very rapid fashion. So you got to provide them with plenty of extra food also. And it's good to have leaves on stand. You've seen my leaves and how I wrap them with the moist paper towel. Well, you can also get a stockpile of those and keep those in the refrigerator. And then they are on hand for you in case you're not going to be able to go out every single day and collect the leaves. Now maybe you didn't believe me when I said that these guys can go through leaves like trains go through tunnels. Let's see them in action. Now if your caterpillars are eating a lot, well that means they're going to be doing something else a lot. We all know what happens if you eat plenty of food, what happens a few hours later. They do this too. Caterpillar poo is called frass, and the frass is going to be building up if they're eating this much. The frass wasn't too big of a deal when they were smaller, but now that they're larger it's going to be building up in the container. When I'm transferring the caterpillars from one leaf to the next whenever I have to freshen up their leaves. That's also when I take advantage of them temporarily being out of the container and thus I clean the container. Another thing too is that the ventilation of your container is extremely important in this case. If it's moist in there at all and the frass stays moist, that is a perfect breeding ground for bacteria that could cause your caterpillars harm. The time it takes for the caterpillar to get to this point, to the fifth in star, can be anywhere from 13 to 16 days, plus or minus a day or here or there. Again, it's temperature dependent, so I don't know exactly what it's going to be depending upon the temperature, but I do know from the ones that I've been rearing, they've been all kept at the same temperature, and almost like clockwork, it's been 14 days from the time it hatches to the time it gets to the fifth instar point, and it starts to do something called J-hanging. When the caterpillar J-hangs, that's when you know it's about to go into chrysalis within about 24 hours of doing it. And that's where our, our part four video is going to pick up, showing you what you need to do on your end to be responsible for the caterpillar while it's J-hanging and while it goes into the chrysalis.